Hi my amazing planner friends, it's Jess from Your Magical Planner and today we have a bit of a pen haul. So you've seen me open some rather expensive pens in the last couple of weeks, but I wanted some pens that I felt okay putting some super shimmery inks in and if it didn't work, it's not a big deal or if it clogs up the pen, I'm not gonna be devastated. So that's where these pens came in. I ordered them, well, I ordered both of these packages from Amazon and they were each about $20. I did have a credit. So I think this one cost me in reality $2 and this one was like $19 and 53 cents or something like that. So let's start with this package. And if you haven't guessed already, these are Jin Hao pens. So these ones are the Jin Hao 82. It came in a three pack for that, you know, almost $20 mark. And I don't remember what the official colors were, but that's exactly how they came with. It's just this little padded envelope and with these little really plasticky things. So if you're unfamiliar with the Jin Hao pens, these ones, which are Jin Hao 82s, which I had done a bunch of research online to see which Jin Hao's do people like the most. And these seem to be the ones that come up really prominently. They are kind of a dupe on, or a replica of the Pro Gear, of the Pilot Pro Gear Slims, is my understanding. I don't have a Pro Gear. I would like to own one one day, but I currently don't. I did really like the solid colors. The Pro Gears usually have some difference in color and that doesn't always appeal to me, honestly. So this one's kind of a light blue. I'll disassemble one a little bit to show you a little bit more in here in a second. This one they say is gray, but it leans a little purpley to me, which is actually what drew me to it because I want to be able to put some really shimmery purple inks in here. And then of course a white, cause I, I kind of like the idea of a white pen, but I'm not sure how practical it is. So that all being said, a couple of kind of interesting things. So if you're really big into kind of replicating that pro gear look, you can, take off the funny, I think these are called the fennials, um, on the top and kind of swap it out with one from another one in the set without, you know, any issue at all and kind of Franken pen your own kind of put together look. The clip itself is pretty solid. I, I don't think it comes off, honestly. Um, hold on, let me put this back on. So, and I mean, you could probably pry it out of there, but it's not going to just fly off. So we have that. So even if you somehow lose the top, you're still, which would be sad because it wouldn't look as pretty. So you have that and we have a nice clip here. It's pretty sturdy. I mean, considering these pens were in the realm of like $6 a piece, you can get them from cheaper if you go on, I think AliExpress and buy them that way, they are a China made pen. Now the one at the bottom, this little ring does come off. You do just pull it off. It doesn't have any real threads in there. And you can see that it's kind of a rough edge on here. So there is that, but you can kind of mix and everything, the colors, if you want it to. We do have a really nice, little metal he ring here that says Jen Hao on it. Really, you know, just a, nothing really special about it, but it doesn't seem, you know, bad in any way. It posts really nicely. In the cap, you kind of have this interior cap in there to help with any drying out issues and that kind of thing. So I don't know how well you guys can see that, but there is a secondary cap inside there to really fit snugly. It'll line up right around here, it looks like. So as far as the internal workings here, so you do have a piston converter in here. My one gripe with this, 
And I, I had to go back and like look at a bunch of different pictures of different people to figure out if our mind defective or anything. But there's no kind of cap onto the end of this. It's just a, you know, just the end of a piece of plastic there. So it, stuff could easily go in there. I, if for any reason the seal starts to break at all, that would allow ink to flow up. So I'm a little um, <laughs> concerned, we'll say, for the converter. I think I could get a, I'm pretty sure this is a standard size converter, so I can upgrade the converters if I want to. I'm going to leave these ones in for now, but I may decide to upgrade them at a later point. We do have metal here with metal, you know, threads, which is nice, honestly. I do like that aspect. It seems to go together really well. As far as the nib goes, so as at least as far as I could tell, they only make these an extra fine and fine. So I did get a fine nib. I don't know if it'll be, you know, fine can be sometimes tricky with shimmering inks, so... We're going to see on that one, but I have heard of some people taking this. I think it was a number, yes, yeah, it's a seven in there. So I'd, I think you can take other number seven nibs and put them in here if they're like a standard size or whatever. It. I pulled this one out just to look at it earlier. So there doesn't seem to be anything really special in there per se. And oh gosh, now I have to remember the, the slotting way. <laughs> but anyhow, so you just have like a pretty standard little nib here. I have seen a little trick where some people have had some issues with the tines being a little off. And because it is all kind of, hold on, let me get this back together. There we go just a um a tightness of a fit like you can see i got that in there wrong um because <laughs> it's off center now i'll have to fix that and i'll do that in a minute but i wanted to kind of show you that you can take those out pretty easily and we'll try and realign it a little better here we go just as long as i don't like because only you have to slot it in the right spot so I think that's better. But anyhow, you sometimes the tines can get kind of, because of the pressure, pushed into each other and misalign just, and just pulling it out and putting it back in can fix that. The, I feel like it's out a lot further than it was before, was it? Let's look at another one. Yep, I saw it a lot further. I gotta fix that. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to monkey with that off camera. But yes, it goes back in further. This is my first time taking a pen and feed kind of apart. So forgive my <laughs> inexperience in getting that back together correctly. But I mean, it's a, it feels pretty much like any other feed I've had. This is definitely, I think, a plastic in here. You do have the two tones on the, like, the nib itself does look a little scratched up, like not the smoothest and prettiest nib I've ever seen, but it's also, you know, it doesn't look like it's in defective in any way, as far as I can tell. Not that I'm an expert. <laughs> so that's kind of the Gen Hao 82s that I got. Then because I did want a medium nib, I did order this one, which is a Gen Hao 100, which also has a lot of really nice things that people have said about it. Some of the, the Jin Hao's, hold on, if I can get it open. Let's try this one. I don't think I care about the box, so maybe we just search the box. Usually don't do that, sorry guys. Oh, there we go. So, opposed to being $20 for three pens, this is $20 for one pen. So we do get a little nicer presentation. We have a, a very simple uh, metal box. I don't know what kind of metal it is. And you open it up and there is your pen. I wanted a pink pen specifically because, well, February is coming. <laughs> so this one, 
if my research is correct, is a replica of, oh gosh, what was the name of the pen? Hold on. Of a Parker Dufold's, um, they had a centennial design. So this one also has a centennial name. However, the Jin Hao company has not been around that long. I think they were founded in the eighties sometime. And originally they were a mainland, um, China type company, like really inland. And I think they may have moved to Beijing. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but the only difference that they made for copyright issues is they did change the clip so that it's not an exact replica is my understanding. But I think that pen is like the Progreer Slims, a very expensive pen. So this pen is very light. Um, I don't know what, it's probably some kind of resin that it's made out of. And we do have, I think this is the Jin Hao kind of logo here on the top with like a horse with some chariots there or some guys driving a chariot, something of that nature. At least I think that's a horse. That's what my brain tells me. Um, it does look like this little end cap portion was probably just kind of slapped on. It's not, I'm not sure that it's exactly center. It feels a little off, but I don't know if it's the weighting of how the logo is on there. And I haven't, cause I hadn't taken this one out. Um, I don't know that the ends come off on this one, but the clip here is very nice, very sturdy again. We have that big ball on the end here, which kind of keeps with the error of the design of the pen is my understanding. And then we have a very thick band here with the Jin Hao and a nice band here. It's a light pink with some white a little bit in it. And then we do have you know, it's just the typical threading on there. The cap looks like similar to the other caps here. It does have a little bit of a cap inside of a cap, not as pronounced as the one on the 82, to be honest. And I would say a lot of the weight is in the cap. <laughs> and then we have what looks like a much bigger nib here. And it does say 18 kg. I, for $20, I would, <laughs> I don't know that you could get a 18 karat gold nib, but maybe I'm wrong, but that's what it says on there. Um, and it's supposed to be a medium nib, as I told you. And then on this side, you see the eight there. And there's not really much else I have to say about the nib area. Um, let's look at the converter and see if it has the same type of converter. Not quite. So it does have that opening at the end, but because they've changed the color here, it does look a little bit more finished. We have this nice threaded area in here that's metal. The converter seems to slide both ways really easily. So yeah. So we'll see how these write. I need to flush them out and ink them up yet and obviously fix that other nib. So why don't I go about doing that and then I'll be back and we'll do some writing samples with these and see how they write and see what we think. If there's anything wrong with this one though, it's probably my fault. <laughs> Just saying. Anyhow, I will be back in a few minutes. All right, guys, just want to do a quick little thing here. So I went to flush out the um, Jin Hao 100 and all this blue ink came out. So I don't know if I got a return and I suspect this is going to be the case with some of these other ones as well, because I was looking at the nibs and it really looks like they've been inked previously and not cleaned. Um, don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> um, it was an Amazon purchase, so I don't know if it was the Amazon seller 
or if this is how gin house come, were they quality tested at the factory and just not flushed out. But I would highly recommend flushing out your pen beforehand for this reason, along with other things, so that when you do ink it up, you get a good, you know, you don't want some other ink that's maybe been sitting in there for quite a while to kind of gunk everything up. So anyhow, well, I'm going to go switch out this water and then rinse out those other pens. This one. <laughs> yeah, I may have killed this one. We'll see. <laughs> so it was really easy to pull out the first time and put back in. And then, yeah, now I've got it back in, but <laughs> it's crooked and I can't get it back out. <laughs> so I'm going to have to work on that one. Anyhow. All right, guys, let's see how these turned out. So in the white pen here, so I inked up just a solid color, the Noodler's purple, which also got my finger. <laughs> and so let's see how this does. So we're gonna say, oh, there we go. Ooh, not loving the writing. And how this is an 82 white. Yeah, it definitely is a is not getting a ton of ink out there. I don't know if it's just it needs a minute, but it's definitely writing very dry right now. So let's see. Let's give it a minute because I literally just inked it up. So sometimes, you know, they need a minute. Noodlers. Purple. Hmm. So let's do the very scratchy. Well, okay, scratchy isn't the right word. It just doesn't have a great ink flow, and I don't, it seems to be getting a little bit better. But see how it skipped there? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to set this one aside for a minute. I'll come back and give it a second shot in a few minutes. Um, I think I'm going to kind of set it where it the, the nib is down and we'll see what happens there. This one I wanted to see what the nib could do. So I did ink it up with Robert Oster, Robert Oster's Violet Cloud, which is a shimmering ink. Considering how this worked out, well, we'll see. <laughs> All right, let's... Yeah, not really anything coming through. Okay. So that does not give me a lot of hope for pen number three. And again, these may have been returned pens because they did all three <laughs> have ink already in them. And I don't know if that's standard, but yeah, it does not look like it can handle the shimmer. Again, we'll give this one a couple of minutes with its tip kind of down there and let that ink flow and see if it gives me a better result in a few minutes. Then there's this one. So <laughs> I really wanted to test the system. So I inked this up with one of the newest colors that I got, which it's so shimmery. <laughs> Actually, it's the reason I got these pens is because I wanted a pen that could potentially handle this that I wasn't going to be upset about. But this is how much glitter is in this. It, it transferred over. <laughs> so this is a, um, it's called Venta. And I can't say, it's I think the Filipino name, but it it's also referred to as the Maiden is what it meant um, 
it's like a fairy tale ink. So let's see if it can do anything with that. Oh, oh, oh we're writing. That's promising. See lots of shimmer. So this is the Jin Hao 100. This will be my first also medium nib and look at all of that in there. <laughs> Dang. And you are the Venta. Let's see, how do you spell this? L A K A M B I N I. However, you say that. Um, I will say it's it's got an okay flow. Not like definitely nothing compared to my more expensive pens, but I would say better than this pen. So I don't know if that's because it's got the medium nib on it or what, but I, I'm overall happy with that. I mean, I'm not expecting great things considering the ink I just put into it and the fact that it's a $20 pen and you kind of get a little bit of what you pay for. There is like a, a diminishing return as far as nibs go. Like they can only make them so good, right? And then you're paying for the different materials they use in the body and like just higher grade materials for a $20 pen. I think this isn't bad. This one I'm not as sure about. Should we see if having it leaned up for a minute or two, if uh, that's made any difference? I'd say not really. I mean, it does okay, but it's not going to be something that I'm going to grab to write very often. And if I can't use any of the shimmer inks in it, then these might go back. Because that would have been their purpose was to, to use a shimmer ink in them. Yeah, and this one's still not writing. So let's try something else here. Let's try just pushing the ink a little bit and see. Do we... Okay, I can see it. Well, there's a drop. But still nothing coming out the end. Yeah. Okay. Well, good to know. Can't handle the shimmer. Yeah. Well, it was an experiment. Good to know. And uh, maybe you don't need to do that if you, like, if you want just a cheap pen. I think I would go for this one over the 82. It does give me a, <clears throat> sorry, it does, <clears throat> It does give me a good idea of, you know, the size of a Pro Gear Slim. So there is that. But I know some people have put different nibs on these and had a good result. So maybe that would be an avenue to explore. I would like to be able to write with this ink eventually, but this is not the pen. I think it's really pretty. Oh, I got to put the other part of the pen back on, right? There we go. So I'll probably unink this one and we'll give this one a writing test of like a day or two and see how that goes. So anyhow, that's everything I have for today. A little disappointing, but considering the price, not unsurprising. I, I like my more expensive pens better. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little bit of a snob. I don't know, but I just, I want them to write smoothly, but I am happy with this one that it was able to at least, you know, do a little bit with that super, super shimmery ink. We'll see how it performs over the next week. Um, but if not, it could probably handle some of the less shimmery inks, I would think. So anyhow, that's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you real soon.